couple things. I know we've talked a lot about quarterback and the passing game, but Clay brings up Xavier Wampa. I was surprised to see him run mostly with the threes, it sounded like, Don. Um, that surprised me a bit. Your guy, TJ Hall, who you were instrumental in recruiting here, um, sounds like he's really coming along there at corner. And he thinks that uh, Blom, Clay thinks that Blom will be the kicker. Uh, Blom and Stevens both struggled. But um, any observations from Wampa, uh, Logan Jones at center, or maybe special teams? Well, I'm pleased to know that Jones uh, looks like a good solid fit at center. And, of course, some people have forgotten that our, our um, first-round draft pick this week started off playing defensive line at Iowa. And um, so I don't doubt at all that Logan Jones will be a really solid center over his career. Looks like that's a good move. I made the comment after the season ended. I said, we need help with our offensive line. There's got to be at least one or more defensive linemen that need to switch over. And sure enough, here's Logan Jones projected to start at center. Uh, that's good to see. I think kicker's really up for grabs right now. Uh, the only thing I know is that our freshman, our, our true freshman, appears to have a stronger leg than Blom. Um, but 50% over the entire spring is not good, and they were 50% again Saturday. And um, I think the Iowa fans certainly have great appreciation for outstanding because we've had three in a row, I believe, uh, that ended up all Big Ten. I think all three of them might have been all Big Ten, um, or certainly they were – uh, all conference honors, second team or third team, whatnot. They were very reliable place kickers. And right now, uh, we're going to have to think long and hard about being so conservative in the red zone because there's no guarantee, even if we are in the red zone, there's no guarantee that the ball's going through the uprights. And uh, Clay also brings up Cooper DeGene, who played a lot of cash on Saturday, along with Terry Roberts, who was out. Those guys are going to be really good athletes. I think you're going to see a strong – Coverage unit on special teams again, Don. We know how good Terry Roberts is back there. He needs to get healthy. Randy says, what do you think needs – this is kind of an off question, but what do you think needs to be the structure of pay for athletes now that the toothpaste is out of the tube? Can there be a fair structure model? Well, I like the idea. I think um, Miami of Florida last year, if I'm not mistaken, there was some talk about it at least. I do remember seeing this, that the plan was to raise all this money, maybe half a million dollars, I think, and to give every player, every scholarship player on the Miami team the same amount of money. Frankly, that's a pretty good a pretty good approach to it all. If they're worthy of being on scholarship, and I think the amount, as I recall, was maybe $6,000 per player, that's actually a pretty good solution. You heard me say, Corey, and Mark, I'd be curious if you thought the same way I did. I, if I'm upset with anyone about NIL, I'm upset with the NCAA because they should have seen this coming 10 years ago. And there should have been something in place to compensate the student athletes uh, more than just a scholarship. And I'm saying several thousand dollars maybe would have prevented this from happening. Was there any reason that all that money had to go to the coaches? I don't think so. I think it should I have been you. shared with the players. I am no visionary by any stretch. And I posted a video in 2012 or 13 when Johnny Manziel had the issues with uh, benefiting from autographs that he had signed, but then the NCAA didn't want to. He he was found <laughs> not guilty. They they didn't follow through the, with the investigation, but he still was suspended for the first half of the first game. So anyway, regardless of what went on there, uh, yeah, I posted content at the time to say, you know, this is a time for the schools or the conferences to get involved and get ahead of this. And like any American. Um, we should be able to benefit and capitalize on work done or celebrity uh, status that we've gained. Uh, and, and therefore, these athletes should be given that same freedom. Um, and that was nine or ten years ago. So they've, there's been a lot of time to, <laughs> to get a handle on this. Yeah, I'm upset with the NCAA. They should have seen this coming and taken steps to prevent it from happening. Um, Garrett, this is a question from Gary Don. He says, can you address specific p positions that I'm assuming he's, he's talking about players that will come out of Iowa in the transfer portal over the next week? I know it's hard to predict, Don. Um, I'm okay with speculating on this because I, I don't know. This is just me guessing. But guys like Dallas Kratith, I've talked about. He's a four-star out of high school. He's played very sparingly on special teams. Seems like he's getting passed up 
at safety by guys like Quinn Schulte, Sebastian Castro, maybe even Xavier Wampa and Cooper DeGean. I'd love, you know, that kid has been loyal to the program. But, Don, nowadays it's the era of the portal. I would be surprised if if someone like Kratif, if he doesn't have a, a clear path to playing time this fall, I'd be surprised if he doesn't enter the portal. And I think we are going to see. I wouldn't be surprised if I, mean, I haven't seen anything on my phone break since we've been on the air. But it's going to be today, tomorrow, Thursday. We're going to get some guys entering the portal soon, I would think. Yeah, and I would think it would be um, really pretty much across the board within the within the Big Ten. I would think everybody uh, – I shouldn't say that. Obviously, there's more incentive to, to stay with a team like Ohio State, a team that's going to win and win big. You know, let's face it, it's a team sport, and you're thinking, well, maybe I'm going to be the backup quarterback, but I'm still one play away from being on the field. If the starter goes down, I've got to be ready. You know, I like my teammates. I like my coaches. Why should I go anywhere? And, and the bottom line, it's okay to be second team. I used to tell my guys all the time, I have no trouble at all with you being third team as long as that's the best you can do. And believe me, we're going to love you for being the best third team quarterback you can be. Uh, it's a team sport. And we win as a team, we lose as a team. And, and if you're the third team player, you're too, you, your mentality has to be, we're two snaps away from being in the game. That's the mentality that a third teamer has to have. And uh, Kenneth says, what uh, what's going to hurt smaller schools more, the lack of going into the transfer portal or uh, lack of NIL use? You uh, really are familiar with uh, small, smaller schools, you know, being such a winningest coach in Western Illinois uh, history, certainly in North Texas, your time with Hayden there. But uh, what are your thoughts on that? I wonder what Hayden would, would think of the portal and NIL and everything uh, if you were around. Well, Hayden wouldn't like it, I promise you. And, and let's face it. One of the beauties of college football, and this is an argument for players being able to stay at one school for four or five years, and for that matter, for having the same coaches for four or five years, and we always had that kind of continuity at Iowa. But let's face it, um, even in life, things don't always go as you suspect they, as you want them to go. So what do you do? Well, you can, you can, you can quit and run away from your problems, or you confront your problems. And the, the thing we've always thought is you got to confront your problems. You know, I'm only third team, uh, and I've always, again, told the players, I have no problem at all with you being third team as long as the other two guys are better. And if they're not better than you, then I'm going to be reminding you of that. You know, you got to be able to make that same kind of commitment to the program that the guys ahead of you have made. And, um, and it's not – there's nothing personal about it. If you're third team, be the best damn third team player you can be. We value you just as much as those starters. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can ask some of those players that never hardly played for us. And those are the guys that really, in many cases, are most likely to be talking to us 40 years later than when they played. Guys that never really played, but they, they've reminded us continually, Coach, I wouldn't give anything for the opportunity I had to play football at Iowa. And I didn't get to play a lot, uh, but I was determined to make that starter the best possible player because I was his backup. And, um, and we can appreciate those players. So the, the beauty of the, the way things were back in the day, you, of course, had to sit out a year when you transferred. The beauty of that is you were forced to confront your problems. I can think of all kinds of great players that played behind somebody else that was supposed to be even better. And, and yet they played one year as a starter and played great. Mark Vlasic's a prime example. Maybe, Mark, you're familiar with Mark Vlasic. He was Chuck Long's backup. I would be willing to bet you that Mark Vlasic might have thrown for more yards in the NFL than Chuck Long did because he was a really quality quarterback that happened to be playing behind Chuck. Uh, both of them ended up uh, having exceptional um, playing careers, high school, college, and pro to some level. Although Chuck, Chuck's problem, of course, he got drafted by the Detroit Lions, and that was a problem. <laughs> Uh, I remember Chuck's first press conference. They said, what's going to be the big difference in college and pro? And he said, I'm going to have to get ball a lot quicker here at Detroit. And he was right. Um, I do want to say this is uh, from Dino, and I did, did just confirm this through CBS. Uh, NCAA president Mark Emmert has announced he will be stepping down. So uh, it looks like your evening is going to be pretty full, Mark. Mm. <laughs> it's going to be a delayed – it sounds like he didn't want to confront his problems either, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a delayed departure for Mr. Emmert. Um, uh, let me, uh, 
I know we're running out of time here, Mark, and I, I promise we're going to uh, end oh, before your, your Nebraska show. Um, I do want to uh, – I don't want to ignore a couple of these comments that we had earlier here. So Cole says, who do you think will win the West, Don? Do you want to just get, throw a team out there? I know it's hard at this point, and I have I'm, even- I'm not that familiar with the schedules. Uh, I do know. I did see there was uh, – I don't know what these power ratings mean, but I know in one particular power rating – Nebraska actually was given the highest ranking ranking in the West. I'd still be hard pressed to bet against Wisconsin. Uh, and again, I don't know who has to play who on the on the road, who has to play at home. I don't know what the crossover games are, but I do think it's safe to say that Wisconsin's historically been a hard team to beat. Kenneth says, Coach Don, is it time for new and younger coaches on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, they're talking specifically about Iowa, I guess. I would assume. So what they're saying? Well, Kenny retired, so I guess they're on the right track. Um, I, I think there's a lot to be said for experienced coaches. I've seen some great football coaches that had a lot of gray in their hair. Uh, and I've seen some young coaches that were ahead of their time. Uh, I think it's really hard to say. It doesn't have to be tied into old age or, or seniority. Uh, I've seen some really bright, hardworking 30-something-year-olds that are outstanding coaches. And I've seen some lazy 60-year-olds that should have quit a while back in time. So it really runs the gamut. I think it's difficult to be specific on, on that. Well, I, and I apologize if I missed anybody else's comments. I see Breyer's comment. We kind of addressed Wampa. I still think he's going to play a lot this this fall. Um, a little bit surprised that he, he wasn't more involved with the ones on Saturday. But I do think he's going to play a lot. Um, Mark, is there anything that I, I'm not covering? There, there was – you know, it's hard because when you're watching, and I'm watching cut up footage of all these snaps on Saturday. It's really hard to evaluate everybody, Mark, uh, because you're you're looking primarily at the quarterback position and you can't always see what's going on downfield, similar to what you're watching on TV. So unless you're there and you're able to kind of video everything or have some kind of classic game footage, if you will. One last comment about uh, Wamp, how's it pronounced? Wamp, Wampa? Is that Wampa. How's it Let's not forget there are 29 practices before the first game. And I promise you, there's a lot of opportunity to move up and down the depth chart in August. And uh, Erica wants me to address her, her first super chat. So let me uh, do that because I did promise her that we'd, we'd return to that. Um, So who do you think should be our quarterback, Don? Uh, The guy that plays the best in August. Who would it be tomorrow? If you had to ma- name a starter tomorrow, Don, can I put you on the spot? If it's, oh boy, I, I can say. Let me say who I think it should be, Eric, and I probably didn't care what I think. I would probably, I would probably go with Padilla right now because of, and very similar to why I would have went with Padilla in the Citrus Bowl because he does provide you an element of mobility. But I'm not there every every practice, so I don't know what Joey Labus is giving you. I do find it hard to believe that Joey Labus hasn't gotten to a point where he could be the starter by, by September. He was here all of last fall, including fall camp. He was here through bowl prep. He was here during the off season. He's here through spring. He'll be here through fall camp again in August. If he's not ready to go by September, I think we've got other problems, but I would probably go with Padilla if, if we had to make a decision by tomorrow, Don. Well, you know, August is, is um, that equal, equal reps against equal competition. That can all be solved in August. Let's find out before game one. And I think if you if you do that in August, you'll have a really good idea of who's better than who. It's not too I'll, late to solve it. We didn't solve it in the spring, but we can certainly solve it in August. 